Good morning, church. Uh, today's scripture is Psalm 23. Donnie has requested that we all stand and read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You guys are doing so well when we read scripture together. I think I'm going to have you guys do that every Sunday. That was, that was excellent. It's hearing hundreds of voices just reading God's word together. That's, that's beautiful. Um, the shepherd leader. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Uh, once again, thank you guys for being here. Those of you who are visiting with us, thank you for being here. If we haven't seen you in a while, we welcome you back. You know, we love you. Thank you guys for gracing us with your presence. Um, I will be teaching a class on leadership. I enjoy teaching the adult class. You know why? I love the teenagers, but every now and then I want to feel grown. You know, so, so it's, it's, I'm looking forward to it. I have, I have the adult class for at least the next six weeks, so please come to that on Wednesday night. And uh, this morning, this is just to give you an idea of what uh, that leadership class is going to be about. You know, what we're going to talk about, it's not coming from me as a leader or anything. You know, I just want us to look at scripture and what does scripture have to say about leadership in the church. You know, so here at the Waterbury Church of Christ, we are blessed to have two shepherds, um, Jim Crisp, stand up, and Ralph Mastriani, stand up. Give these guys a hand. These guys, they, they work a lot in the background, you know, things that you don't know. They pray for you. I work with them. I give them a hard time. They still put up with me, you know. And, and we have seven deacons, I believe. Some of them are not here, but those of you who are here, please stand up. I know we have Stan, Jim Sinzon, Ron Sinzon, Todd Sinzon, Paul Hazard, John Cordani. Am I missing anybody else? And Joey Giottino. Um, thank you guys for the work that you guys do. You know, um, I, I know Stan, he, he does the maintenance in here, he organizes our worship. Jim does, he's doing VBS and the children's church. And, and Paul Hazard, he, he's, he's on top of our children's ministry, you know, and, um, and, and, and adult classes. So our deacons are working, so I, I really appreciate the work they do. You know, so uh, these guys, they are not the only leaders in the church. You know, as there are many other ministers, people in charge of different things that are going on with the ladies uh, group, you know, and different things like that. You know, so there are different type of leaders. But this morning, I'd like to focus on the shepherd leader. First of all, I want you to notice that I did not refer to our elders as elders. You know, I, I really want you to shift your focus this morning. I didn't call them elders because I believe that they are shepherds. That's what they are called in the New Testament. You know, um, in the Bible, I made a research and all these words, elders, pastors, bishops, overseers, and shepherds, they are used interchangeably. You know, in many occasions, they mean the same thing. 
There are some denominations out there where someone is called a bishop and that's considered to be a higher position than a pastor. There's a reason for that. You know, and I believe, as many writers have said, one of the reasons why we in the Church of Christ, we refrain ourselves from calling these guys, uh, from, uh, from calling these guys pastors, it's because there are many other people in, uh, uh, with other religious belief, they, they use the word pastors to mean something else. They use the word bishop to mean something else. But in reality, it all means the same thing. You know, um, so if elders mean bishop, why in the world don't we call Bishop J.A. Crisp? He's a bishop, right? Come on, Bishop Crisp. He's our bishop. The word bishop means elder. That's what it means. Why don't we call Ralph Pastor Ralph Mastriani? He's our pastor. How would you feel, Ralph, if everyone started calling you pastor? <laughs> but that's what it means. They are our bishops. They are our pastors. This morning, I want to focus on the word shepherd. You know, as a matter of fact, when church is over, call him Pastor Ralph, okay? When church is over, go to this guy and call him Bishop Crisp. By the way, do you know what the A stands for? You guys don't know your bishop. Oh, my goodness. This bishop been working here for 25 plus years, right? 25 years. And you guys don't know what his middle name is. I'm going to put you on blast. It's Aubrey. <laughs> it's Aubrey. James Aubrey Crisp. I'm going to get in trouble. But anyway, so. <laughs> Can I come to work on Monday? <laughs> So they are our bishops. They are our pastors. That's, that's what the word means. You know, and just, just so you know, yesterday, um, yeah, Friday, and yes, uh, Friday night was the wake and yesterday was the funeral. Um, I had to speak at a Haitian funeral. And I think God was trying to teach me something. From Monday up until this morning, I mean, I spent the entire week studying and learning about the word bishop and shepherd and pastor. Something you need to understand, in the Haitian community, if you're a preacher, you're a pastor. If you're a preacher, you're a reverend. So I was at the First Assembly Baptist Church of God on Thomason Avenue speaking at a funeral, and my name is in bold letters in their program, Reverend Pastor Donnie Pierre. And I'm walking, oh, is that you, Reverend? Oh, Pastor, good to see you. I'm like, no, it's, it's only Brother Donnie. Okay, Pastor, good to see you, Pastor. You know, and, and I'm just walking around, and because I've been studying this word, right, this entire week. And I walk inside of this church building, and everyone calling me Reverend. I'm not a Reverend. Please don't call me a Pastor, because I am not a Pastor. Literally, these guys are, okay? And they are our shepherds. And we need to recognize that. We need to understand what that means. So, I know we, we call them elders, but this morning, I want you to think of them as shepherds. God has appointed them as shepherds of his flock. And the flock, that's us. We are the sheep of his pasture. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 1 through 3. To the elders among you, this is Peter talking to elders in a congregation. I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Come on, you know the deal. You read it. Not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be. Not lording it over those entrusted to you. But being Do you guys get that? So, today, we are going to talk, we're not going to talk about the qualification and nomination and, and all these things of eldership. We're going to talk about their roles and responsibilities towards the, 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 the church of God. 
Once again, Peter called out the elders of the church and he said, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. He says, elders, be shepherds of these people. They are under your care. How many of you are parents? These children, they are under your care. That is not a small responsibility. That is not something you can take lightly. Not here, okay? You guys heard that? Not here, but I've heard other congregation. People are saying, I can't be an elder. Can you? I, I can be a man, sir. Really, can you? Sometimes we need to understand the responsibilities that come with a title. Because this is not only a title. This is something major that these guys have to do in the church. God appointed them and gave them that responsibility. And we need to respect that. Now, some of you might be in charge or a leader for an organization. Some of you might be a leader in an institution. Some of you are a leader in your family, and you know it's a major responsibility. It is no different when it comes to eldership. And it's not only the shepherds in the church, but also if you're a Bible class teacher, guess what? You are a leader. Because those kids in your classroom, they are under your care. God forbid one of them get hurt. Who do you think the parents are going to go to? They're going to come to you. They are your responsibility while they are in the room. It is not a small matter, and we need to understand that. Be shepherd of God's flock. And here, these guys, they have the responsibility to shepherd 175 sometimes more than that people, that is not a small matter. Now, as far as their responsibility is concerned, the very first thing that Peter said here, watch over them. So that's number one. The responsibility of a shepherd is to watch over the flock. Watch over the church. Jesus said, watch over my sheep. According to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 2, a shepherd's job is to watch over the church. In the Old Testament, when Israel was facing Goliath, you guys remember that story? They all were scared. They all did not know what to do. And I like this verse in, in chapter 17, verse 32, I believe. Uh, um, the Bible says that the king said, whoever defeated this man will be rich. Whoever defeated this man will marry my daughter. Whoever defeated this man, listen to this one, you will never pay taxes. How cool would that be? You know how much, how much taxes I pay on my house down the street? How much taxes I pay on my little Nissan once a year? I would fight that guy. Everyone was scared. But here comes this little young shepherd boy by the name of David. He said, don't be afraid. Don't worry. I'm going to fight this man, and my God will give me the victory. Why? David understood something, because the battle is not ours, he said. The battle belongs to whom? To the Lord. That's what David understood as a shepherd. And our shepherd, they understand that. The battle belongs to the Lord. No one believed that David could win this fight. No one believed that David was old enough. Here's this young man who could not even wear a body armor. He said, I'm going to fight this giant. Sometimes our shepherds, they are like David facing the giants of the world. You guys understand what I'm saying? It is not a small responsibility. Everyone in that community, nobody wanted to fight this guy, but the shepherd stood up for everybody else. You guys understand that? It is not a small responsibility. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 34 and 37, David said, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, rescued the sheep from its mouth. 
When it turned on me, I seized it by, the, by its hair, struck it, and killed it. That is not a small responsibility. In other words, David is saying, as a shepherd watching over my father's sheep, my job was to protect them. The job of a shepherd is to protect the sheep. Their job is to protect this church. Protect them from what? How can you do that? How can you do it, David? No one believes David can do it. Maybe somebody even questioned, can Ralph and Jim really be elders in this congregation? Let's be real. Well, that's the thing. They can do it because it's not about them. It's about God. David was able to fight because he had God on his side. As a leader in the church watching over God's people, shepherds need to protect the church from the enemy. And we all know who that enemy is. Now, let me say this. The protection that they provide, the shepherds in this congregation provide, it's not because they are so sure in their own ability, their own wisdom. It's because they know the battle belongs to the Lord. They know no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter what this congregation is going through, God can give us the victory. That's the faith they have. That's what makes them shepherd, because they make it about God and not about them. David said, I used to protect my father's sheep from lions and wolves and bears. Nowadays, shepherds in the Lord's church, they need to be on guard. The Bible says they need to be vigilant because the devil walks around like a what? A roaring lion devour. That word, just devour devour you brothers and sisters the devil is real he doesn't like what's going on in here right now the devil doesn't like seeing brothers and sisters praising God together the devil doesn't like seeing fathers and mothers and children coming to church and praying God together he doesn't like that the devil is real he's seeking anyone whom he may devour and that could be you we all need shepherds shepherds need to be looking out for any false doctrine that can hurt the brotherhood shepherds need to be protecting the church from any worldly issues that can disrupt our unity Shepherd need to fight for the congregation and we're not always going to like what they are doing but it's their job to protect the congregation from the enemy They need to be looking out for sheep that may wander away from the faith. For sheep that are lost. I want a shepherd who knows how to fight. I want a shepherd who is a, a prayer warrior. A shepherd is going to pray for me and with me. Because that shepherd knows the battle belongs to the Lord. No matter what you're going through, we can get through it. Because God is the good shepherd and he can give us a victory. That's where... It all comes from the good shepherd. I want a shepherd who believes that we are winning warriors. I don't want a shepherd who's going to, well, I don't know what you're going to do now. <laughs> oh, well, you might as well just stop going to church altogether. I don't want that kind of shepherd. I want a shepherd who's going to be strong with me in the faith. A shepherd who has a good faith himself. Who's going to grab me by the head. Come on, brother. Let's do this together. That's the kind of shepherd that I want. And that's the kind of shepherd we have. And that's the kind of shepherd we need to desire in the future for this congregation. A shepherd who is sound in doctrine, in teaching. A shepherd who's willing to do whatever it takes to protect the congregation, to protect the sheep. That is not a small matter. When you read scripture. Now, to provide protection, as I was thinking about this, to provide protection, you need some type of weapon. Sometimes I feel like Satan is coming at us, guns blazing, 
and we just got our two hands. What kind of fight is that? We need some type of weapon to fight. When you are fighting a battle in your life, you need something to fight with. You need something to protect yourself. You see, David, as a shepherd, he used a slingshot to kill Goliath. But all shepherds, especially during, uh, in, the, uh, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they use something else. They use a staff. Now, I got this from Kathleen Sinzone. And I, I was going to get a, a better looking staff, you know, one with the hook, because that's the one that the shepherd used, and I'm going to explain that later. But poor Christine, it was Thursday when I asked her to find me one, and, and by that time, Amazon was saying it'll cost $25 to ship it the next day. I'm like, Christine, just forget about it. I'll use this one. Okay. So, in Micah chapter 7, verse number 14, read that first part for me. That's pretty clear, doesn't it? Here is God talking to a leader. He says, shepherd your people with your staff. That's, it's very important for us to understand, what is this? What, what, what am I talking about? By, do you see Ralph and Jim walking around with a stick like this? You probably will think they got hurt. Maybe they're getting too old. They need something to hold their body. Lord, have mercy. This church took a whole, took, that's not what I'm saying, but there's a purpose for this. There's a reason Jesus, um, God says, shepherd your people with a staff. You see, David had a staff. And it was very popular for shepherds to have one during Bible time. And they used it to protect the sheep from wild animals. They used it to protect the flock. Elders, our shepherds, Bishop Jim Crisp, Ralph Mastriani, I know you guys have that staff to protect the church, to provide protection. In, um, I call it the staff of protection. In Psalm chapter 23, verse number 4, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your staff, it comforts me. You know, to watch over the flock, you need a staff to protect the sheep. But once again, what am I talking about? In this verse, the, the, the psalmist David is understanding that the good shepherd, who is God, he's going to provide protection with his staff. He understands that the good shepherd would use his staff to make him feel secure. So, before I, before I say anything, I remember I was um, teaching the children's church downstairs once, and I was talking about Moses. So, you know, Moses had, I had one of these past, you know, with Aaron, and I was like, I use the word stick, thinking that they are kids, they're not gonna understand staff, you know, so I use the word stick. And one of the girls, I believe it was um, Raya Torrington, oh, Mr. Dunn, this is not a stick, it's a staff. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Now you don't tell me. <laughs> so I use the word staff. What is the purpose of this? By the way, those kids are so grown. They are grown up way too fast, okay? It was to provide protection. That's what it was. Well, that, that was one of its purpose. So now they use it to protect the sheep against the lions and the bears and the wolves. That's what it was for. Not only that, a staff was also used for correction. We're going to talk about this word. Discipline. Oh yeah, I know y'all don't like that. They use a staff to co for correction and to discipline the sheep. You better believe that sheep need discipline every now and then. Parents, do you discipline your children? Yeah. You know, one thing I came to understand about discipline is this. It's not so much punishment. You need to approach it as a teaching opportunity. Okay? You need to approach it as a teaching opportunity, hoping the person will learn from what happened, good or bad. 
Discipline is important. Correction is important. So to watch over the flock, it means you need to correct the sheep. You see, no one's saying amen now. We don't like discipline, do we? <laughs> but you guys know where I'm heading with this. The shepherds in this congregation, every now and then, they need to discipline you. <coughs> Woo, I'm too grown for this. I ain't got to listen to Bishop Chris. I don't need to listen to Ralph Mastriani. I have to say, yes, you do. They are our shepherds, and it is their job to discipline you. Church discipline. It's, it's their responsibility. You know, we, we tend to think of discipline as punishment. They're not here to punish you. They want you to go to heaven. Right, Ralph? You want them to go to heaven. So they are helping you to learn from your mistakes or from anything for that matter. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16, all scripture is God's breathe, breath, God breathed, and is useful for what? Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So in other words, the staff that the elders hold in their hand, it's the word of God. That's what it is. They need to use scripture to protect you. They need to use scripture to teach you. They need to use scripture to discipline you. I know you did something wrong and there's something going on in your life, but the Word of God says, some people don't like that. Don't take it on them. It's the Word of God. In the Lord's church, there will be a time for correction. There will be a time for discipline. And when these moments happen, we need to use the Word of God as a shepherd's staff to do so. Why is that? Because we do not rely on our own understanding. They do not rely on their own wisdom. They rely on the power of God's word. They rely on the wisdom of God's word to discipline you. That's where it comes from. Just like parents should never be afraid to discipline their children, shepherds, you should never be afraid to discipline the church when it's needed. Bible class teachers, you should never be afraid to discipline those kids in your room. And guess what? Some sheep can be stubborn. Huh. Okay, let, let, me, let, let, let me put it like this. Some of you can be stubborn. You can say it louder, Jim. Some of us can be stubborn. We don't like discipline. We think we're too grown for this. We all need discipline, folks. You're never too old to be disciplined by the word of God. You're never too old to reshape your life by the word of God. You're never too old to find out what's wrong with you from the word of God. That's where the discipline comes from. Now, when church discipline is being done according to scripture, how should we respond to it? This is my life. I don't care what they say. Should that be our attitude? Let's see what this word say. Help me out, the yellow parts. Obey those who rule over you as those who must give account Okay, Jim, Ralph, they just said it. Okay, they said they are not going to give you grief when you discipline them. Okay, yes, I heard that. You guys heard that? Don't, don't give them grief. It's their responsibility. Do you guys see that in the scripture there? It's their job. We need to accept discipline with joy. How many times I try to discipline Jamal? He's, he's not smiling when I'm doing it. <laughs> but don't give them grief. It's coming from the word of God. Okay? If they are talking to you from the word of God, just take it to God. Discipline is needed in the church. The staff was used for discipline and correction. There's always going to be some, some stubborn sheep. 
leaving the pack, just going away. You have to use the staff to, 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 to bring him back. Not only the staff was also used for discipline and correction, it was used for guidance. Now, if you notice, the shepherd's staff, it has a hook, okay? My, my, mine doesn't. But you, got, you guys get the picture. It has a hook for a reason. You know, it, it was that hook that they use every now and then to guide the sheep into the right direction. Now, understand, understand this. Sheep, they don't always know where they're going. I was reading one of the one of the commentary I read. They said, "Sheep are dumb." Okay, this time I'm not talking about you. Sheep don't always know where they're going. Sometimes they all going together as a group, and there'll be one or two who just go away and just wander away. And the shepherd will use a hook, just grab them by the neck and pull them back in. Sometimes, Ralph, you need to use the word of God and hook them, just pull them back in. We're not going to like that. Sometimes that's what needs to happen. And guess what? They did that to me. And I asked them. I wasn't too happy about it. But I needed that. We all need that. We all need that guidance. We all can wander away from the church every now and then. We all can wander away from the truth, from the faith, from doctrine. We need scripture and get hooked. Come on, come back here. Yes, do it with love and gentleness. You know, there's a scripture in Jude. I can't remember which verse. Jude only has one chapter. It says, when it comes to maintaining people in the church, some have compassion on them, but others snatch them from the fire. I love that. I'm the type of sheep you need to snatch from the fire. Some of you are the type of sheep that need to be snatched from the fire. Yes, always with love and gentleness, and humility. But Lord knows, we all need that every now and then. Some of us need that every now and then. And guess what? I read different commentaries. They said shepherds did not always save all the sheep. They didn't. Some of them wandered so far away that the wolves grabbed them, kill them. And that's the case for this congregation. Some sheep have wandered so far away from the faith, and they've never been back here. Sometimes it's good not to lose hope, to still pray for people, and still trying to reel them in and use the word of God. I'm praying for you. I love you. Some people, you just know, you know too much about scripture not to be in the church. But there are some, they will get lost. That happens. But it's the shepherd's job to guide the congregation. And one thing I, I read is that shepherds expected their sheep to fall off the road. They didn't expect their sheep to be perfect and never, never do anything wrong. Shepherd expected their sheep to get stuck between rocks. Shepherd expected their sheep to get lost in every now and then. That's why Jesus told a parable in Luke chapter 15 about the lost sheep. Shepherds, it's your job to find those lost sheep. I know you're not always going to get them, but we can't neglect them. In Psalm chapter 23, verse number 2, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. It's their job to guide the congregation in the path of righteousness using the staff, using the word of God. It's their job. And like I said, every now and then, they need to use that, the, 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 the hook. Yeah, I do have a picture. Just hook them. Hey, where you going, brother? Come back here. No, not, not like that, not like that. But seriously, we need to use the word of God to bring people back. Come on, let, let, let's get back. I know you're going to fall off track, but I'm going to use the word of God to get you back on track. 
I know you're going to sin every now and then, but I'm going to use the word of God to show you the power of forgiveness. I know you may feel like you don't need to come back to the Waterbury Church because I've been gone for so long, but I'm going to use the word of God to show you, just like it says in Luke chapter 15, you can be gone forever long, but if you come back, we're going to embrace you. That is the power of the word of God. I don't know about you, but every now and then I need some guidance in my life. Every now and then I need somebody to give me some counsel. Somebody to help me with some decision that I have to make. Because sometimes, Donnie does stupid stuff. Yeah, go ahead and judge me like you've never done something wrong yourself. Yeah, come on, judge me. We all do things that we regret. We all do things that's not right. That's why we need that person in our lives, that spiritual leader, that spiritual mentor. Hook us up. Hook a brother up. <laughs> Come on now. We need the word of God. And their job is to use the word of God to bring us back into the fold. Every now and then, I need a shepherd who's going to ask me, how's your spiritual walk with God? Every now and then, I was an elder who's going to ask me, Donnie, how are you doing with your prayer life? It's not that they're trying to, to, to get up in your business. It's their job. They need to check on your spiritual growth. We need that. That's one thing I really appreciated about uh, Tony when he was here. He's like, and you know how serious Tony is, right? You guys, you guys know that face. Br Br Brother Donnie, how's the spiritual walk of God? It's, it, it means the world to me. Every now and then, we need that. And don't wait on the elders to ask you. Ask the person. As a matter of fact, turn around next to the, per the person next to you. Ask them, how's your spiritual walk with God? Now, if they say bad, tell them to come forward and repent. Okay? It's our job to check on each other. It's their job to check on you, to guide you into the right direction. So, it's their job to watch over the flock. And by watching, they need to, to provide protection, uh, correction, and guidance. But it's also their job to serve the flock. And we see it here in 1 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 5 as we read. Because I believe one of the greatest things about being an elder is that you must be a servant. Jesus Christ said, I did not come to be served. I came to what? If you want to be an elder or leader in the church period, you need to be ready to serve those sheep. And guess what? You're not always going to like all the sheep, but you need to serve them. Shepherds, I believe, they need to know the needs of the sheep in order to really serve them. I remember our bishop, J.A. Crisp, saying over there next to his bishop's wife, he was preaching once, and he came up with this acronym. And I, I remember he gave me a, an article. I read it. Usually when he gives me something, I know it's good, so I read it. Shape, strength. What is that, that person's strength? Their talent. Their heart. What's in their heart? You know, their, their attitude. Some sheep have positive attitude. Some sheep have negative attitude. You don't need to say amen. I'll say it for you. Amen. What's, what's their personality, their experience? So to that, as I was reading that article, shepherds need to know the shape of the sheep to better serve them. Sometimes your needs cannot be served unless you talk to them, unless you tell them. They are, there's help out there. Unless you are willing to talk and ask, you can't be served. Now, before I go any further, Remember in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 2, it says, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain. Shepherds must serve. One thing I like about Jesus, the good shepherd, is that before he could meet people's spiritual need, he made sure to meet their physical need first. Jesus healed folks and he forgave them. 
He fed folks and he taught them. It's hard to teach people who are hungry. I'm losing some of you right now. I can see your faces. <laughs> Had a crowd of five, six thousand people hungry. Just Christ fed them and then teach them. I wish I had the power to turn this bread and fish multiplied and feed you all right now. God didn't give me that one. But listen, sometimes you have to meet people's physical needs first before you can meet their spiritual needs. I'm reading this book, which is one of the books that I'm going to be using for our leadership class. And this writer said, by removing obstacles to their focus, he enabled his followers to concentrate on their given task. As strange as it may seem, the surest way for a leader to succeed is to put other people first. Sometimes it's hard for us to follow God when we have so many obstacles and, and, and issues and, and roadblocks on the way. The shepherds, they can help. They can do that. Now, let me explain something. Because someone knows what your needs are, it doesn't mean they are always going to be able to help you with it. For example, let's say for some weird reason, your kids thought it would be funny to take their favorite Lego toy and flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Lord have mercy, it happens. And now your toilet's it's, it's clogged. Don't call Donnie Pierre the youth minister and say, Donnie, I have a need. I need your help. I can help you in that one. I'm going to tell you, call Bill. Call Rob. This is, I have proof. This is me and my friend Rob. It took us two days, three trips to Home Depot to fix a broken pipe. I'm not even joking. We, I went to Home Depot, I got the wrong pipe. Rob went to Home Depot, he got the wrong pipe. So if you have plumbing issues, don't call Donnie. I can't do anything for you. That's not a talent that I have. I'm not afraid to admit it. I, I can pray over the pipe. <laughs> That's the best I can do. But seriously, you guys need to understand. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 10, it says, Each of you should use... Do you guys understand that? You need to use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Each one of us have a talent that somebody else don't have. You need help with, 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 your, with, with filing your tax? Don't come to me. I pay someone to do mine. Go to Christy. She's not going to like that. She already got her hands full with the church on stuff. You know, what I'm, saying, what I'm trying to say is that our shepherds, it's their job to serve the needs of the congregation, but spiritual needs come first. Always. Spiritual needs come first. Not only do they need to know the needs, but the most important thing of all shepherds need to do, feed the flock. Feed the flock. I believe this is a priority. Amen, church? If a leader is going to serve this congregation, you need to feed the people. In John chapter 21, when Jesus Christ was restoring Peter, you remember what he said three times? Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Feed my sheep. Feeding the flock is important. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about it literally, although sometimes we do need to feed people literally in order to feed them spiritually. By the way, next Saturday, the youth group and I, we're going to the homeless shelter. If you'd like to donate some food items or whatever, please see me after this. You know, we're feeding the sheep. Literally. But the thing is, it's their job to feed us spiritually. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3 and 4, it says, They all ate what? And drank? For they drank from, from? That accompanied them and? Jesus Christ said, I am the bread, of, the, the bread of life. He is the living water. He is what we need to feed on. We need to feed on the word of God every day. Don't just wait till you come here on Sunday morning, on Wednesday night, some of you. Feed on the word of God every day. Drink that living water every day. Pray every day. Praise his name every day. 
How many of you can spend seven days without eating food? How many of you can do that? Put your hands down, Jamal. You asked me for food this morning. <laughs> we, can't, we can't do that. We can't. I, I found this thing. A friend of mine said to me first. Seven days without God makes one week. You guys get it? I thought it was cool. Without God, our week would be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, fight day, shatter day. We can't, we can't spend a week without, without feeding on the word of God. We can't, we can't spend those days without praying and praising. It's just the shepherds, their job is to check on us and make sure we are getting fed properly. Lead us to green pastures so that we can get fed. Feed us properly in the word of God. But more importantly, shepherds, their job is to be an example to the flock. If you are going to lead, you need to lead by example. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 3, it says, Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but be being an example to the flock. The greatest leader lead by example. Jesus, when he came on earth, he led by example. If you want to teach me how to read my Bible, show me by reading your Bible yourself. If you want to teach me how to pray, show me that you're a praying person yourself. Leaders need to show the church that whatever they are trying to teach, they are willing to do it themselves. That's good shepherding. Okay. But also, not only being by example, I want to follow a leader who's willing to show me that he's not holier than thou. You guys understand what I'm saying? I want to follow a leader who's willing to show me that he's a sinner just like me, saved by the grace of God. I want to follow a leader who understands the power of confession, the power of forgiveness. Not a leader who's going to pretend to be holier than thou, or I'm better than you. No, you're not. Ralph and Jim, they're not better than us. That's right, Bishop, I told you, you're not better than me. <laughs> Sorry, Ralph, you're a sinner just like me. They just have that responsibility because at the end of the day, guess what? He is the good shepherd. They've just been entrusted with that responsibility. He's the good shepherd. Jesus Christ is the one we serve. To be a leader in the church, you need to remember that you are not the good shepherd. You've just been entrusted with certain responsibility. That's why we usually have more than one leader, more than one of them, because when you have more, like, they can make better decisions. Not one person making all the decisions by himself and, you know, doing, no. We have several deacons, more than one elders in the congregation. All these things are important. Why can't you lord over the church? Um, I like this verse. Do not lord over them. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse number 22, keep watch over yourself and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Which he brought with his own blood. Ralph, did you die for the church? Jim, did you? No one did. Jesus did. Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the leader. He's the one that we are following. And the leaders of this congregation, their job is to put us on the right path and obey the commitments and the will of God. That's their job. Not their own agenda. If you have your own agenda for a congregation, you can be a leader in that congregation. If you have your own thing you want to see happening, you can't be a leader in that congregation because it's not about you. It's about the people of God worshiping the one true good shepherd and doing his will, not thy elder's will. He's the good shepherd. And more importantly, to be an example, you need to be imitators of Christ. I want to imitate a shepherd who is imitating Christ. Paul says, imitate me just as I imitate who? Christ. Our shepherds, they are imitating Christ. Because I know if you're imitating Christ, you are going to love people. 
If you are imitating Christ, you are going to forgive people. If you are imitating Christ, you are going to have grace in your heart for people. That's what it means to imitate Christ. To be a shepherd, you must be an imitator of Christ. This morning, I want to encourage this congregation. Let's support our shepherds. This week, after studying and praying and reading scripture, it is not, it is not an easy job. We need to support them and not give them grief. You guys said it, so I'm going to hold you guys responsible, of, okay? Jesus is here. He heard you say it. But this morning, the invitation is this. If you'd like to be part of this flock where you are loved, where you are, you can be forgiven, where those shepherds will show you grace because Jesus has grace for us. If you want to be part of this group of people who are serving God because we are trying to go to heaven, if you want to be part of this flock where we know sheep can get off track and they can get lost every now and then, but we have people who's going to hook us up back in, please, don't wait. Come forward. Or go see one of them. They would love to pray with you and for you. And ask them, hey, I'm not a Christian. What must I do to be saved? And I, I tell you what. They know what you must do to be saved, okay? If you're a shepherd, you should know what someone needs to do to be saved. Let's all stand and sing. Please open your songbook to 134, 134, 134.